What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to show you how to make these vintage chrome materials in Cinema 40. Alright guys, so before we start the video, uh, please make sure that you leave a like, a comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because I have a ton more tutorials and the more support we get on this channel, uh, the more tutorials will come your way. If you want to get the project files for all of my tutorials, you can become a Patreon. The link for that will be in the description. And if you want to learn more, check it out at the end of the video because I will get into it a little bit further. All right, so uh, I got this idea from a Tumblr page. It's called Desert Chrome. And basically this page shares a lot of, uh, well, these vintage looking airbrushed chrome. So this is made in, I think the eighties mainly. Uh, let me show you a quick preview of this. Um, you know, looking at these, uh, especially something like this, this is what uh, I guess the internet kind of sees as uh, something called Desert Chrome. Uh, and it has that like super vintage looking, uh, well, metallic chrome uh, stylization. So I thought, let's see if we can do something similar in Cinema 4D. So in this video, I'm not gonna show you how to create like the textures and everything. I'm just gonna show you how to create objects in Cinema 4D uh, in this stylization. And uh, just one thing to note, you don't need any plugins for this. All right, let's dive into this. So the first thing we wanna do is make an object. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this one invisible for now. And uh, also gonna show you how, to, how I made this object that I just showed you. So the first thing we wanna do is drop in a circle. Uh, and the first thing we wanna do is go to the deformers and add a twist deformer on it. And then under the object, uh, the angle we can put that to like 180 degrees so that we now have like this kind of infinity looking sign uh, then we want to rotate the whole circle on its side so we're going to rotate it 90 degrees in this direction I'm holding shift by the way to uh, get it in increments of five degrees so we have a smooth rotation here so the next thing i want to do is make the circle editable by pressing c on my keyboard under the spline tab, I'm gonna just go and change the intermediate points to subdivide it. This makes the edge a little bit smoother. And then we're gonna grab the scale tool and we're gonna scale this thing, uh, I think to 200% in this direction. So now we have this infinity spline, let's just make a 3D object out of it. So we're gonna do that with, of course, the sweep. With the sweep selected, I'm holding Alt on my keyboard to make it a child of the circle. And nothing is happening yet, and that's because we need another 2D shape to wrap this around our spine. And in this case, it's gonna be a simple circle. So I'm gonna go and hold our mouse over the circle. And while holding shift on my keyboard, I'm gonna make this a child of the sweep. And as you can see, we now have the shape, but the uh, width is way too far a big. So let's just lower the radius to, I think something like 30 centimeters. Yeah, that should do the trick. And that's basically already uh, what we were looking for. So that just closes up in the layer menu. And the next thing we're gonna do is make a new material. We can do that by pressing Control or Command-1 on our keyboard. And we'll call this Chrome. Let's apply it immediately to our sweep and then uh, we are going to see whatever we're gonna change. So how I'm gonna see a live edit of this is by pressing Alt and the letter R on my keyboard. And this gives a, a quick little preview of what we're going to modify here. So I'm gonna turn off the reflectance and the color, and I'm gonna turn on environment. So if you don't know what the environment tag does in the materials, it basically simulates a fake reflection. Uh, so basically if we add in a texture here, it's gonna simulate that texture as if it were a reflection into this shape. So what we're gonna do is click on this drop down button and bring in a gradient. Sorry for my voice, by the way, guys. Anyways, let's click on this gradient. The first thing we wanna do is change the type. So now this is going horizontally and we want this to go vertically. So we want to click on 2D V. And this makes it look a little bit more realistic. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't really look like a chrome material yet. And this is the point where we need to take a look at our reference material. So looking at this one, for example, something that's very noticeable about these styles is if we zoom in a little bit, all of these have a very certain horizon. And I think this is why they call it desert chrome because it looks like a reflection in a desert, of course. Anyways, we need to take a look at the gradient. Like if this were a real life chrome object, this uh, basically would have a dark blue at the top that slightly goes to a lighter blue, eventually to like white. And then immediately it turns to a hard dark brown uh, edge and then goes with a like golden uh, gradient to white again. And this is basically what we're gonna simulate in the gradient. So let's go back to Cinema 4D. 
And as we can see, we now have a black color at the top. We don't really need this one. So let's reverse them real quick. And the first thing we want to do is make the black color a darker blue. So I'm going to see if we can grab the color somewhere between darkest blue and like this cyan. And I found that using a big saturation but making it a little bit darker works best for this kind, I think. We need to go almost black, so something like this. And then we need to go to a lighter blue. So we'll change the hue a little bit and then just change the lighting here. And then we want, don't want to get this all the way to the saturation, just like somewhere around half. This might be a little bit too much even, so let me just desaturate this a little bit. And then just drag in the white slider. So this is basically the first part of the gradient done. And now we basically want to make a hard edge to a darker brown. So let's click on one more point. We'll go to the orange. We'll put the saturation all the way to the top. And then we're going to make uh, pick a dark brown here. Something like this should do it. And we want to drag this white slider very close to the darker one. So the next part is we want to grab like the golden orange kind of uh, color. So let's just go a little bit back to the yellow with the U. Lighting all the way up and then well, somewhere like this should be fine, I think. And then we want to go with a even lighter color. Something like this. And then we want to go to white again, I think. Uh, and I'm not really sure about this last color really because it's a little bit well, it's a little bit too much there, I think. So let's just grab this one and then we will desaturate the orange a little bit. Make it a little bit darker, perhaps. Um, so this is all up to you, basically. You know, you're gonna experiment with this a little bit. And uh, one thing to note here is that it really depends on the form of what your object is. So in this case, we have this infinity sign. Um, if you are using, for example, a cube, the reflection is gonna hit a little bit differently. And the way you're going to change that is basically by moving the points around here in this gradient. For example, if we want to have the horizon a little bit lower, we need to move these points a little bit more to the left. As you can see in the preview, uh, this makes it so that the darker uh, horizon is a little bit lower in our shape. So yeah, that's basically what we're doing here. Uh, so let me just experiment with this a little bit more until I'm uh, a little bit satisfied with the, the decision here. All right, so I think I'm satisfied. So let's look at it in the render preview. So the quality is a little bigger. And this is kind of like what we're all going for. Um, so yeah, this is a quick and easy method in how to simulate these uh, kinds of like reflections in Cinema 4D. Uh, so as you know, it's fairly easy. You just have to know what to do, I guess. If you want to learn how to make this into that actual vintage look, uh, that's probably where we're going to take this into Photoshop. If you want to learn about that, uh, please let me know down in the comments. And I'll see if I can make that into a new video as well. All right, guys, so one more thing. If you want to get the project file for this video, you can get it by becoming a patron of mine. So if you don't know, by becoming a patron, you will be supporting my channel, which basically means that you will maybe be able to make even more tutorials for you guys, more asset packages and more guides. Besides really helping me out here, you also get access to all of my project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my Dreadlabs asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive videos, such as how to start your own clothing brand from scratch, as well as a lot of other project files and guides that come with these video series. So a huge thanks to my Patreons for helping me out and supporting the channel. If you want to become one yourself, there's a link in the description. Uh, again, leave a like, a comment and a subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. This was Tom from Dreadlabs and I'll see you guys in the next video.